G'day guys, JBC here for JBC Reviews. Thanks for tuning in. Now, I'm excited because I've got another, as you, some of you may recognise, an FMS box here, um, because I have another FMS plane. Now, I've got four other ones. So this plane's number five. Now, you do the math. If I've got five, it says something about their planes. They're pretty good. Anyway, there's been a lot of hype about this specific one, um, but is it any good? I don't know. Which one are you wondering? It is this one right here. It's the JU87 Stuka. Germans. Anyway, now, as I said, yeah, there has been a lot of hype and anticipation about this because a lot of people are hanging this come out. I was lucky enough to get it to be one of the first ones. Whether or not that's good, bad, because it could have some bugs. I don't know. We'll find out. Um, but yeah, let's open it up. Let's have a much, much closer look at it. And then we'll take it outside and we will fly the living snot out of it and try and break it. And, or maybe try not to break it, but you know. See what it does good and what it doesn't do good. So, yes, let's do that. Oh, I see nothing. I was not here. I did not even get up this morning. <laughs> well, guys, here it all is all laid out for you guys to see. Okay? And it's a very nice model, I must say. Very sexy and quite complete. Now, one cool thing immediately that I noticed was FMS now include two manuals. One of them being the ESC for those that wish to program them stuff because there's been a lot of questions posted on various threads about how to program it so good on them for actually sticking it in there now the stock one is sorry the normal uh, manual that you get is just your standard FMS job okay starting off with the fuse all right it uses just the old foam hinges on the rudder same as the elevator okay there it is over there now it comes with a flat spar that fits in, it slides in there. I'll put it in on one side so that you can see. Obviously put a bit of glue in there and that's how it fits together. Um, now, one thing to note guys, now very important, it's already been reported that these hinges here, okay, FMS apparently have glued them straight onto the foam on the wing. Now, that's not good because they will come off and Tony at Nitro Planes, as he probably experienced it when he turned on his video, if you check it out on YouTube, it looked like it came off and came apart and he lost his model so um, one thing to check is or oh, look at that one you can already see I've just noticed it. there we go that one's already come off and I haven't even flown it. it's just out the box so we'll lift that up we'll have a look so what you're going to want to do is scrape away some of that paint rough it up and re-glue it okay so that's there we go that one's come off too so we'll just rip them off well that one's stuck on good the other two, shit house. Okay, so you're gonna wanna re-glue those hinges again. All right, moving along, the wing. I had slight little bit of damage there, if you can see it. Um, from packing, not too bad, not a big problem. Um, I don't know why that's sticking up like that. Looks like the wire needs to be pushed in. Anyway, there's a flat ribbon spar that goes in under there all the way. And these two are uh, your other spars over here. Okay, a long one and a short one which go into the wings here one in there and one in there okay and these are leads for your lights flaps and ailerons um, so the wing the wing does feel pretty solid it's no there's not any I can't feel any flex or very little flex anyway foam quality is fantastic it's definitely um, a lot smoother or it's the smoothest out of the ones or out of the four other ones that I've got so FMS seem to have raised the bar again with their finish, which is good. Now, um, moving on back, sorry, back to the fuse. It uses a dual push rod setup for the elevator, single for the rudder, nice little table there. Um, if we open up the canopy, which uses a magnet and a latch, as you can see, magnet there. Oh yeah, by the way, let's have a look. FMS is new. Goofy's gone. There's your new pilot. He looks pretty spunky. Um, he's going off to war, doesn't look too happy. And then this is what I found quite funny. You see him and his mate. He's a bit of a pygmy, like Rubes a midget in the back. He's actually quite smaller. I don't know if you can see it on the video, but he's actually a lot smaller. Uh, anyway, he's not as scale, he's, like, he's a different scale than the main pilot, the gunner is anyway. Okay, put him down. Um, you've got enough room, fair bit of room in there to put a decent sized battery. Um, don't know where it's going to balance yet because obviously you have not flown it. And there's your battery that it comes with, connector that it comes with. Little Velcro strap in there. 
bigger servo, oops, bigger servo for your elevator, 17 gram I'm assuming. So it's for the stick in the other one. You stand at nine for the rudder. Um, and that's about it. Oh sorry, and also, yep, there's your nose cone pops or the nose pops off like that. And it comes with the 3648 stock motor. Same as what you get in the Mustang and the V. Um, now, for those looking at possibly, see, upgrading the motor something bigger, you've got really only a small amount of room in there. Um, if you can do it, but you're just gonna have to shave foam. So, haven't got a heck of a lot. But I'm just gonna leave it, because uh, I've got the same motor with a three blade in my course there. It flies really, really good. Just under 50 amp, or around the 50 amp mark. So, I don't know what this is gonna pull yet, because it uses a different style propeller. As you can see, there's the spinner, pretty funky looking one. Your cannons, your wheels, bats, um, that's injection molded plastic. There's all your um, little accessories, your, your control horns and whatnot that you need. Um, and I wanted to show you this here. Here's your wheel spat, okay? Now, um, when these become available with spares, I would recommend you buy one because, or buy a set, only because anyone who has a rough landing these things also double as struts. Look, so I'll take the four screws out, and that's what they look like inside. All right, so if you have a hard landing and you break that, see, you're gonna be buggered. You won't be able to fly, you won't be able to land it. So, um, I mean, it is tough plastic, don't get me wrong. It's pretty strong. And also, I would also recommend, which is what I'm gonna do, uh, there when you screw it onto the wing, I probably put some washers around the screws just to spread the load out so you don't crack that around there, around each one. Um, so that's what I can show you from inside the box. Um, all in all, pretty happy. Um, I might change the scheme. I'm actually going to go for a winter camo scheme. So I'm just going to get a bit of a paint job. Whether or not I do that before the video review, I'm not sure. But that's everything that you get. Um, let's put it together. Let's see how good it goes together. If there's any tips, I'll chuck them on and I'll let you know, and we'll take it outside and fly. Hey, Lisa! <laughs> now, here's a quick builder's tip, guys. Now, here's the standard FMS 50 MPSC that came with the Stuka, which I've taken out. Um, now, I'll probably use it on another plane, something that doesn't draw much current. Now, I like to cut out the heat shrink that it comes with to expose the heat sink a bit more and allow for better cooling. Do that with all my ECs. This is the one that's going in. It's a 60 amp ESC with a 70 amp burst rating. Now, with a separate back that's been wired in, as you can see. Now, what you do, it's really easy. All you gotta do is just tap in to the, power, uh, to the uh, positive and negative wires that come off your battery connection. Now, as you, all I did was just solder it on and then put some heat shrink over the top. That then allows your separate back to get power, obviously which will then supply, plugs into your receiver and supplies your receiver with the necessary voltage that it needs. And that little ring on the end is just a ferrite core which helps against interference. Now with your wire, with your wire that comes off your ESC now, you don't need power from that anymore. So what you do is you take out the little red wire, just lift the tab in the middle there and that wire should pull out. Fold it over and put some heat shrink over the top. I mean you can cut it but it's probably better not to. Um, if you do that the way I've just done it there with some heat shrink, you can simply just remove the heat shrink at a later time and use it again if you ever need to, not have to worry about soldering it. So that's it. Now what's going to happen is if the um, ESC ever dies for whatever reason in the plane, this little separate back will supply the receiver with voltage, with power and the control surface in the plane will still have power and you'll be able to glide it in for an emergency landing. FMS, I hope they address this, The is the tail wheel. Um, now, it is weak as piss, basically, and mine broke on the first landing. So have plenty of the other guys. Um, all I did simply was, I some used some two, um, two or two and a half, I can't remember, wire, um, and just bent up a new one. In there, comes out there, used the same little um, securing method there, and put a little push right onto the rudder, and that was it, bent it up, wheel on there, and it works fine. I mean, it's only a tail wheel. But after it broke on the first flight, I had no tail wheels, I was just running on the skid, and I still actually had a little bit of ground control. So anyway, they're two things to check out for uh, when you get yours.